Here we are with the intro number eight. There's a few things we want to be able to do today, and that's first find the zeros of a function. And once we have those zeros, be able to state the x-intercept root or factor. Be able to find the extrema of a quadratic on an interval. And graph a rational function with an oblique asymptote. Suppose that f of 3 is equal to 0. Now, that's basically the definition of what a 0 is. We would say that 3 is the 0 of f, right? Any value that makes a function equal to 0. A couple other things that we can point out real quick is that we do know one element of the domain and one element of the range of f. Um, since... 3 is that x value, the value that we're going to plug in. We'd say that 3 is the element of the domain. And what comes out, f of 3, f of 3 being 0, is going to be an element of the range. So we know one ordered pair, 3, 0, is one ordered pair of f. Now working off of that, if we know that 3 is a 0 of the function f, then we also know that it's an x-intercept. Because we said that point three zero is on the curve, well, if we graphed three zero, that would be one two three zero. That'd be right here, which means that my curve—I don't know what it's going to look like—but it's going to pass through that point, making that at least one of the x-intercepts of the graph of y equals f of x. Now, when we think about uh, the function as an equation, we do know that x minus three would have to be a factor of f because when I plug 3 in, I'll have 3 minus 3 equals 0. So one of the factors has to be 0 in order to make the entire function equal to 0. And um, a root of the equation would be a solution of the equation, f of x equals 0. So x equals 3 would solve the equation, f of x equals 0. So that's just some vocabulary for you, but how all of those things are related to each other. Real quickly, I want to review how to graph a parabola when we're given the function. Uh, the first thing that we would want to do is to identify any of the zeros. Right, so we're going to take that function, x squared minus 12x plus 35, and set it equal to 0. We can factor that as x minus 5 and x minus 7. And hopefully, real quickly, you see that our roots of the equation are going to be x equals 5 and x equals 7, meaning our zeros are 5 and 7, which also means our x-intercepts happen at 5 and 7. So if I graph them right here and right here, uh, another important characteristic of, um, of a parabola is going to be the vertex. And when it comes to the vertex, the vertex is in the center of the graph. It's, it's where the line of symmetry is going to go through. And since we already have two of our zeros, I know that the line of symmetry is going to have to go halfway in between them, which tells me one very important thing, that the x-coordinate is halfway between 5 and 7, which is, of course, going to be 6. So to find out what the y-coordinate is, I'm just going to take 6 and plug it into G. Then we'll have 6 squared minus 12 times 6 plus 35. So 36 minus 72 plus 35. That should be negative 1. So we have our vertex at 6, negative 1 right here. Uh, the other thing that we can find is uh, very quickly is the y-intercept. We already found x-intercepts, so finding the y-intercept is going to be easy because to find an x-intercept, we let y equal 0. To find a y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So find g of 0. We'll have 0 squared minus 12 times 0 plus 35. So our y-intercept is going to be at 35. Way up there. We're not even going to be able to graph it because it's kind of out of the range of, uh, of our graph. But we do have enough to come up with a good graph of the parabola. And we see that it's going to look like this. Now, graphing a parabola is something that you already know about. Uh, but I want to start talking about uh, this term extrema. 
And when we're talking about extrema, that's the extremes of a graph, so either maximums or minimums of a graph. And when we're talking about this parabola, we would say that it does have a minimum value. The minimum value, of course, is going to be the value at the lowest point. Now, we said that this ordered pair was 6, negative 1. The minimum value is the value that comes out of the function, the negative 1. It occurs at x equals 6. Right? So the x coordinate tells us where something happens, and the y coordinate tells you the value of that thing. Um, we don't say that this, uh, this curve has a maximum at all because it's unbounded uh, on the top. It's going to go up forever. There isn't a biggest number that it reaches. So this one only has a minimum. So what if we were to graph h of x equals x squared plus x minus 6 on the interval negative 3 to 4? First, we would find our zeros so that we can identify the x-intercepts. Um, so we take the function, x squared plus x minus 6, set it equal to 0. And we're going to factor it into x plus 3, x minus 2. And we see that our zeros are going to be negative 3 and 2. So we have x-intercepts at negative 3 and 2. Um, the y-intercept is not difficult to find, so we can find that real quickly. We're just going to find h of 0. So 0 squared plus 0 minus 6 is negative 6. And we also have to find out where the vertex is. Remember that the vertex is going to happen halfway between our two zeros, between negative 3 and 2. So the x-coordinate, to find that number, if you were going to calculate it, you would just take those zeros, add them together, and divide by 2, which would make negative 1 half. Then to find the y-coordinate of that vertex, we're just going to take negative 1 half and plug it in. So we'll have negative 1 half squared plus negative 1 half uh, minus 6. And that thing's going to simplify down to negative 6 and a quarter. So our vertex is at negative 1 half, negative 6 and a quarter. And we got a good idea of what the curve looks like. However, we're told to just graph it on the interval from negative 3 to 4. Well, I know my value at negative 3 is right here. It's 0. But I need to find out what my value is at 4 as well. So to do that, we're just going to plug 4 into our function. h of 4 is going to be 4 squared plus 4 minus 6. 16 minus 6 is 10, plus 4 is 14. So at x equals 4, we're going to have a y value way up at 14. And so our curve we can have a vertex down at the bottom, go through this zero, and then end up here. Now we do have a maximum and a minimum. That when we look at this entire curve, it does have a lowest point down at the vertex. And it does have a highest point when x is equal to 4. So we can say that minimum value, the lowest point, um, has a value of negative 6 and a quarter, and it occurs when x is equal to negative 1 half. Our maximum, that highest point, the maximum value is 14, and it occurs when x is equal to 4. Lastly, I want to get some more practice graphing a couple of rational functions. Uh, we can start by looking for zeros. Now remember, when it comes to zeros, that's going to happen when the entire fraction is equal to 0. Well, when it comes to a fraction, uh, we can multiply both sides by the denominator, uh, and only the numerator would end up equaling 0, so x equals negative 3, which means we have an x-intercept at negative 3. For the y-intercept, we just let x equal 0. So k of 0 is uh, 0 plus 3 
over 0 plus 2 gives us a 1 and a half, 3 halves. So we have a y-intercept at 1 and a half. Right. Just these two points is not enough to uh, give us a good graph, so we're going to need some more information. Uh, asymptotes are going to be very helpful for us. We can find uh, the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes real quickly. Remember that when we look at the denominator, um, when we're talking about a fraction, the denominator cannot equal zero. So the thing that's going to make x plus 2 equals 0 is negative 2, which means we have an asymptote at x equals negative 2 right here. Then to find the, um, the horizontal asymptote, we look at those leading terms. When those leading terms have the same degree, all we have to do is simplify them. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals x over x which is just 1. So we have this horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Now, we've got a good idea of what the graph is going to look like, but we should be a little bit more accurate. So find some more points, right? maybe just 1 or 2. Let's find k of negative 1. Right? If we plug negative 1 in there, we'll get negative 1 plus 3 over negative 1 plus 2, which is... 2 over 1 or 2. So we have this point, negative 1, 2. Now I can see that this branch is going to go through both of these points right here and extend towards each of the asymptotes. The same thing is going to happen on the other side. Um, we can be more accurate by plotting another point. I have the 0 at negative 3. We could check on negative 4 as well. And we'd have negative 4 plus 3 over negative 4 plus 2. That'll leave us with negative 1 over negative 2 or a half. So when x is negative 4, the y-coordinate is a half. And we see we'll have another branch over here going through both points and then getting close to each asymptote. This last one looks a little bit different. There's a lot of things that are very much the same, like finding zeros. Um, so we're going to let the fraction equal 0, so really it's the numerator that's going to equal 0. Now that doesn't really factor nicely. Uh, in order to find the, those zeros, what you could do is use quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so we'll have 6 plus minus square root of, what is that, 40, 52 over 2. And then you can go to the calculator and get decimals for that. Um, that's a, a lot of unnecessary work for right now. So we can just kind of skip that part. Uh, we're just trying to come up with a good graph. Now, it would be nicer to have, um, to have zeros, but it's not necessary to come up with a great graph. We could still find the y-intercept right, just by plugging zeros in. So f of 0 is uh, ne 0 minus 6 times 0 minus 4 over 0 minus 2. So we have a y-intercept at 2. We can also identify um, some asymptotes. When we look at the denominator, it should be easy to identify that one of our asymptotes is x equals 2. So 1, 2, that's where our vertical asymptote is going to be. But when we look to those leading terms to identify a vertical asymptote, we see that they're not the same degree. So we can't just simplify those leading terms. We have to do something else instead. What you need to do is to divide. Now, you can divide using long division or synthetic division. I'll use synthetic division right here. Remember, that's where we take the coefficients of every term, so 1x squared minus 6x minus 4, and list them out. And we take the 0 of the denominator, so the thing that's going to make the denominator 0 was 2. And we bring down this 1, and we're going to multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply by the 2, 
over here. 1 times 2 is 2. And as we go down this way, we add these two together. So we'll have negative 4. And then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Adding these two together gives us negative 12. All right, our last term is the remainder. And what this line tells us is that f of x can be rewritten as 1x minus 4 plus negative 12 over x minus 2. And the thing about that is that because we have this fraction at the very end, this fraction is never, ever, ever going to equal 0, which means that f of x is never, ever, ever going to equal x minus 4. So we get this other asymptote at y equals x minus 4. This is called an oblique asymptote. And if we were to graph that, 2, 3, 4, there's our y-intercept. And 1, 2, 3, 4, another intercept here. These are the intercepts of our as asymptote. Since we do have one point, I do have a good idea of what this branch looks like. It's going to pass through this point and get close to each asymptote, my vertical one and this oblique one down here. Right. As for the other branch, pick a, pick a point or try and find another point. Let's find f of 1, 2, 3. Right. When we plug it in, we get 3 squared minus 6 times 3 minus 4 over 3 minus 2. And that looks like negative 13. So that will be way down here at negative 13 on this side of our asymptote. So our curve is going to go through this point, get closer to that vertical asymptote, and closer to this oblique asymptote. So that's how you um, identify the oblique asymptote and use it to come up with the graph.